Hi, I'm Lee Partridge, and welcome back to Comedy TV for another midweek show. On the show this evening, we have highlights of reaction from the under 21s clash against Leeds United in the Premier League Cup. That was on Monday evening. We'll also hear from Matty and Owen Google following our defeat against Crawley. We'll have a look at some upcoming matches for the first team and the academy. And lastly, we'll catch up with Harper Reid, who won Colchester's goal of the month for November. Before all that, it wasn't the result we wanted at the weekend against Crawley here at the Job Serve Community Stadium. Despite a brilliant goal from Joan Taylor, assisted by Owen Goodwin, into added time, we just didn't have the time to find the equaliser. Here's the goals with thoughts of Matty and Owen to follow. Matty, key moments in key areas, is that what cost us the, the game today? Yeah, it did. It ultimately, it was never going to be the prettiest game because it was debatable whether the game was going to be on before. Um, and obviously, myself and Scott Lindsay spoke to the referee. He was happy for it to go ahead, but it was borderline and it was, it was always going to be a difficult game, a difficult game on the legs of the players. But um, yeah, key moments in, in, in both halves, in both boxes, it cost us. Yeah, I mean, early on, it looked like we were on the front foot and really took the game to them. And then you don't want to be talking at the end of the game that something that happens that early, but those chances do change the game, don't they? They change the game hugely. And unfortunately today we didn't take them. Um, another thing we've got to be better um, and more ruthless, which which we have been um, on occasions this season, but just more consistently, I think. And you you, you get those two goals um, and there was other opportunities, like crosses, flash across the box, etc. Game was completely different. Um, it just wasn't, be, wasn't to be our day today. And it looked a very soft penalty from where we were. Is that how you saw it from? Yeah, the, just watched it back. It's extremely soft. Um, again, the referee doesn't give himself much time to to make his decision. His whistle to the mouth straight away. Really, is wrong side, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm really not sure. And, and um, yeah, it kind of sums up where we're at at the minute. We're not getting those decisions in our favour. Um, but I can't fault. I can't fault them. The players that they kept going to the end. That pitch was so heavy. Um, and, and they kept going and they kept going and um, yeah, it, it, it's a disappointing afternoon. And, and when you have that scenario where the referees come in an hour before the game, looking at it again at half one like he did, is it difficult to keep the players' minds focused on like just just think of it as being on? You didn't need to ask them that. I, I don't think it is. We had the meeting at the same time that we always have it. Um, the, the players, I said to them, expect it to be on. We got into that mindset. Um, 
it's, it was just a difficult pitch in general. It's always going to be a, a difficult game in terms of um, how heavy the pitch was um, due to the amount of rain. I've, I've got to say the ground staff have done unbelievable to get that that game on because when I turned up earlier on, just um, before midday, it, it, it didn't look playable. Um, and the under-18s coming in, taking the covers off, a real team effort. Um, but yes, we, we got the game on, but I'll ultimately couldn't reward them with a win. And is it frustrating that those chances don't go our way and they... And they did for them, and the penalty goes their way. Is it a case of just trying to put that behind us now with a whole week's training and just kind of getting back to it and, and leaving this one behind? I think we've got to review this one, definitely. But we've got to, I think this is the second week um, since I came in um, as interim, that we've, second full week that we've had, and, and they're really important weeks because they don't come around that often. You know, I think the following week, obviously, we played Salford on the Friday, but we've got a clear week then as well. So, two really important weeks coming up. Um, they're a together group in there. I don't want the, the supporters, regardless of, of, of anything else, to, to think that they're not. They're the, they really are and are absolutely devastated. Um, and, and they want to do well for this football club. I mean, it must have been a really disappointed changing room in the game after that defeat. Um, yeah. It, 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 every, after every loss, is disappointing. And we just, I don't know what to say. Like, really, it's just, it's really poor. We're not winning games. We're not getting points on the table. And that's what it's about, really. Getting results and not doing that. I suppose it's a case now of sticking together and believing in what you're trying to do. And hopefully, very quickly, uh, starting next weekend, that changes it and we start picking up the results. Yeah, I mean, look, that's the thing. We've been saying it every week for the last few weeks. Even before we went on that winning streak, we've been saying the same thing. We need to be better, be better, but we're not being better. And I don't see what the problem is. We just need to find find what the problem is. And I just don't really understand it. Yeah, it seems, it seems like you're really disappointed yourself and frustrated that we haven't gone on and win it. Because, you know, I expect every single footballer in the country wants to just win games and go out and uh, get the three points for the fans. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like I thrive off the crowd. I thrive off the fans. I love, I love making the fans happy. And we ain't doing that in a minute. And, you know... We, we need more. We need to give the fans something to cheer, and we ain't doing that. And from a personal point of view, you must be pleased to, to be back in because sometimes ankles can be funny injuries, but you haven't missed it, as many games as you might have done. Yeah, I mean, at first I thought it was quite bad. It ended up not being as bad. Just miss out a few games rather than, you know, try to play through and make it worse. And obviously now it's a lot better. I played today with no issues, and I felt good today when I was playing. And were you a frustrated watcher? Are you a good spectator of football, or do you just want to be out there knowing that um, you should be out there but for the injury? I just I want to play every game I can, and for me it's just I'm not a big fan of watching football when I'm at home. I don't watch football, and you know knowing you're injured and you watch football from the side, I don't really enjoy it to be honest. And it doesn't help when we were losing as well. I think that hurts even as a even when you're not playing. It hurts as a player. So yeah. And are you in constant contact with the Palace about you know how the loan's going and and how they see you you're kind of doing here? Um, yeah, I mean I speak to um, Mark Bright um, every so often. Spoke to him last week. Probably speak to him every two three weeks. Um, speak to people from the club. You know some of the goalkeeper coaches, some of the S and C staff who I know there. Um, yeah, just speak about everything, how things are going, all that stuff. So yeah. Two honest interviews from Matthew and Owen there with both the head coach and the goalkeeper making many valuable points. We had some really good chances once again in the game but just couldn't turn it into goals and ultimately that's what cost us the points. Nevertheless, as we've always said, games come around quickly and especially this time of year with Saturday's match against Wrexham. It's a good opportunity to put some of those things that Matthew and Owen spoke about right. It's going to be a tough game, no one will. Um, Wrexham are doing, but let's go there with some optimism and see if we can get something out of the game. Speaking of upcoming matches, there are a fair few games taking place across the entire festive period. After travelling to Wales to face Wrexham, we will take on Salford City at the Job Serve Community, Community Stadium on Friday the 22nd of December, and the kickoff of that is 7.45pm. 
We then face MK Dons away from home on Boxing Day. Kickoff for that is 3 p.m. Another away trip will follow, this time to AFC Wimbledon, who we will face on Friday the 29th of December, and that is 7.45 p.m. And finally, we're back at home on Monday the 1st of January, first day of the new year, when Gillingham come to town. Kickoff for that is 3 p.m. Tickets for all our upcoming games are available on our website. For those planning to travel to Wrexham, tickets can be purchased from our ticket office. Supporters will not be able to buy tickets on the day in Wales and there also will be no collections. Moving on to our under 20 ones now who were facing Leeds United in the Premier League Cup clash. That's on Monday evening. The youngsters needed a good result to keep their hopes of progressing from the group alive. Here's what happened at Park Drive on Monday night, followed by the reaction from Liam Bagley and Brad Young. Oh, um, Frankie. Um, Beetle. Frankie. Now T. Marley. Brad. A beetle. Oh, the the it's, a it's not a red. It's never been a red. Liam, a heartbreaking defeat to, to Leeds United. What did you make of the game tonight? Yeah, heartbreaking is probably a good good way to put it. Um, I thought the lads' effort, application um, was was top top draw, um, and to lose it in the in the last minute, like you say, is is heartbreaking. They're they're devastated in there, um, but a real real good shift from the lads. Yeah, I was going to say the, the performance was was very very good from from certain players and and the first half we, we looked very confident on the ball and and we, we had a few chances that possibly we didn't take and should have been more goals ahead. Yeah, definitely. Um, we just spoke about it there, sort of the chances we had at one nil and and at nil nil um, to to go in at half time one nil up. I thought it was fully deserved. The, the lads stuck to our game plan of being compact, being hard to break down, but then we knew that with their expansive shape, we could hurt them on the break, which I thought we did. And we, we probably deservedly took the 1-0 lead, but we needed that second goal to try and kill it off. Yeah, and then the start of the second half, we looked quite confident on the ball again, but it was that red card on 75, 76 minutes that, that changed the entire game. Yeah, it, def it definitely did. Yeah, we were we lost a little bit of composure for, for five or 10 minutes before. Um, and yeah, going down to 10 men definitely give them the ascendancy, but... Still, with, with 10 men, I thought that the lads stuck to what we asked and, and defended really well. Um, but yeah, the red card changed it. And I'm sure there's some positives that you'll take from the game today. Brad's performance, as well as a few others, Oscar Thorne and, and others as well. What did, you make of, what did you make of them tonight? Yeah, so, so Brad's remit was 60 minutes. He obviously hasn't had, had loads of minutes with the first team at the moment. So again, we're, we're there to, to support the first team. So 60 minutes for him. I thought he, he led the line really, really well. Took his goal well. Um, uh, yeah, Oscar Fawn looked dangerous on the break, which which was pleasing, and, and I thought I thought Frankie Terry and and Ronnie Nelson at the back looked looked assured. 
And then just moving forwards in this competition, what will you be sort of aiming to achieve? Is the promotion from the group still achievable or is that looking a bit more difficult now? I think it looks difficult. Obviously, three points out of, out of four games we, we spoke about in the, in the pre-match uh, team talk that we, we probably needed a win tonight to keep it alive. But listen, you never know. We, we, we go to Chelsea and, and try and win that and we go to Luton and, and try and win that. So, yeah, you, you never know. Brad, a, a tricky game against Leeds United in the Premier League Cup tonight. Uh, what did you make of the game? Uh, I thought it was quite a disappointing loss. I think uh, we didn't deserve that. Um, everyone's worked hard in there. We've worked hard outside of the pitch and I think minimum we should have got a point. But um, yeah, it's tricky to take, but I guess you live and you learn. And then obviously for yourself as well, getting a goal, getting your name on the score sheet. Can you take us through, through that goal you scored today? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I think uh, I can't remember the the first bits, I just remember it's broken to Marley and I'm looking at the line uh, and then he's played me through. I think I've done, uh, I think it's a tricky way to get towards the goal because it's a defender recovering, but it's a good position. Taking the shot, a couple of times I've got there this season, Doncaster, uh, Stockport and I've not taken the shot, so I just thought dispatch and then I think the keeper's done, a, done me a favour, but it uh, um, doesn't matter how they go in, they say, so it's great. And yeah, a busy Christmas period coming up for yourself as well. So was this game sort of more of a preparation for that period, building your minutes, building your sort of um, confidence? Or? Uh, you know, I take every game as it comes. So I was told to play this game today and um, I was ready for it. So um, uh, I was glad to get my minutes in and over the Christmas period we hope to get more minutes. But um, I take every game as it comes. So I'm not thinking about them now, I'm thinking about today and now Rex on my Saturday, hopefully. And how do you differentiate between the first team games and the under 21s? I mean, it, it must feel quite different. How, how, how do you see that? Uh, obviously, you know, it can be can be quite quicker in the first team, a um, bit more um, physical, faster game. Um, I think I think in this game in particular, we played against 21s of this level, Tottenham and West Ham, so it wasn't hard to adapt. But you know. It's, again, I just take every game as it comes and I play every game, however, however level, whatever level it is. Good to hear from Liam and Brad there and good to see the young striker on the score sheet again. Once again, it wasn't the result we wanted, but as Liam said, there were plenty of positives to take from the game. Also good to see Brad getting a chance, getting a chance to build up his confidence, goals and fitness ahead of a very busy festive period. Let's take a look at the games coming up for the under 21s and the under 18s. Before their Christmas break, Liam Bailey's men will take on Watford in a professional development league clash. That's on Friday, the 15th of December, 2 pm kickoff at Park Drive in Morden. And we travel to Walthamstone FC in round four of the BBC Essex Senior Cup. That's on Tuesday, the 19th of December, that's 7 45 pm kickoff. The under 18s have just one more game for the new year and that will be played at Morgan and Tiptree on Saturday the 16th of December with QPR the opponents and kick off at 11 a.m. Right, lastly coming up on the show we have Arthur Reed speaking about his goal against Sutton which was voted as the youth's best strike on November by you the supporters. Let's remind ourselves of the goal of what it looked like and then we'll hear from the man himself. Really, second time you've won goal of the month for your goal against Sutton. Just, just tell us a little bit about the goal. Yeah, happy with the goal. I um, think it was a really good finish uh, to obviously beat a few players and then, and then yeah, a tidy finish. So, yeah, happy with the award. And it's the second time you've got it for the club as well. Obviously, two very different goals. You, you must have very different things going on in your game. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, bring different kind of attributes and, and things to the game. Uh, and yeah, different type of goals, try and become a more all-rounded midfielder. Do you think that's something that you need to add to your game with, with the long distance strikes as well as the, the weaving runs that get you those goals? Yeah, for sure. I think there's always room, room for improvement and 
at the start of the season, goals were definitely something I wanted to add to my game, all type of goals. Um, and yeah, I've done that a bit more this season, so hopefully, yeah, I hope I can get a few more. It's a bit of a battle between you and, and Cam in midfield about who's going to get the most goals. What do you think you need to do in order to beat him? Uh, probably shoot more. <laughs> he He's very good at like crashing the box and kind of picking little pieces up and scoring tap-ins, which he's, he does very well, gets in the right place. Um, so yeah, hopefully I need, I need to get a few of them as well. Is he someone that you can learn from? Obviously, he's, he's a little bit more experienced than you. He's done a little bit more in his career. Is he something that you, is someone that you can tap into and see what he does? Yeah, for sure. I think, obviously, I was a young lad when he was at Luton and I kind of watched him play a little bit. Um, but now he's, he's had a really good career. So, yeah, someone that I can definitely learn from. And you've mentioned to us as well that you want the league goal of the month as well. Do you think this goal is worthy of it? Um, I think it's got to be in for a shout. Yeah, I think my last couple potentially should have. Um, but yeah, it would be, nice. be lovely to win that. Great goal from Arthur and the way he twisted, turned inside, outside, then inside again uh, through the defenders was fantastic to see. And we can't forget Shrike itself, which fell beautifully into the far bottom corner of the net. A very worthy winner for the Merit Skull. Also, good to hear from Reedy there, who is determined to improve in all areas of his game to become the all round midfielder he spoke of. That's pretty much it for the show for today. Remember, you can get your Wrexham tickets. They are selling fast. Uh, go to the ticket office or our website and you can find all the details there. And also tickets for our home flash in Salford on the 22nd of December are uh, also on sale. If you are heading to Wrexham, safe journeys to and from the game, hopefully we're bringing some points back from the game itself. Till next time, have a great week, have a great weekend, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you very, very soon. Until then, it's goodbye for now.